On our last trip to Florida, we spent a few days in Miami to explore the area. The main things that we wanted to check out were Everglades National Park and Biscayne National Park. But on one of our free days, we stumbled upon Bill Bagg's Cape Florida State Park and decided to check it out. There's a lot of fun stuff to do here. You can rent and ride bikes, hang out on beautiful beaches, or you can take a tour of an old lighthouse and other historical structures, which is how we decided to start our visit to the park. A short ways from the parking lot, you'll find an exhibit with some retired pieces of the Cape Florida Lighthouse. V and I have always been fascinated by lighthouses, so it was really cool to see these components and the roles that they played in its operation. From the gate, it is just a short walk to the lighthouse, and that's a good thing because you need to save your leg strength. Once you enter the 65 foot tall tower, you'll find yourself at the base of a 109 step spiral staircase. If you have a fear of heights, this could be a little bit tough for you, especially when you consider the fact that the stairs do sway a little bit as you walk up them. If you want to check out the lighthouse for yourself, you need to visit during its open hours, which are Monday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, between 10 to 11 and 1 to 2 p.m. After climbing up the staircase, you have one more short but steep climb up a ladder if you want to climb all the way up to the lamp room. You will be climbing up through a pretty small opening, so be sure to watch your head. And finally, here we are at the top with the light bulb. This is obviously not the bulb that was in use during the tower's main operating years between 1825 and 1878. But it was still cool checking out the oldest structure in Miami-Dade and a place that was responsible for saving tons of lives back in a day where you couldn't rely on GPS while driving your boat. From the lamp room, if you climb back down that steep staircase, you'll come to a room with a door. That will take you to this cast iron balcony that goes all the way around the lighthouse. Once again, if you have a fear of heights, this will definitely not be for you, but the views from the top are absolutely beautiful. Whoever built this lighthouse must have known what they were doing because it has survived almost 200 years of harsh weather and hurricanes and even attacks by Native Americans. After the lighthouse was deactivated in 1978, it fell on hard times and went through many years of neglect. But luckily, the state of Florida purchased it in 1966. They gave it some much needed love and even made it a part of the National Register of Historic Places. After leaving the lighthouse, we headed out to explore the area and we even saw a couple of trash pandas. The white sandy beaches here were pristine and I really wish we had more time to stop and relax here. If you like taking landscape photos, this is also a great spot to get a picture of the lighthouse. One thing that you do need to watch out for is that sometimes in the winter, Portuguese man -o -wars will wash up on the beach, and I definitely know those things from experience. If you want to see the video where I get stung by one, you can click in the upper corner right now. After that, we stopped by the lighthouse keeper's cottage, and I'll tell you, beachfront property like that? Sign me up. The original cottage was built in 1825. However, it was damaged by a hurricane in 1835 and then destroyed by fire in 1836. It was eventually rebuilt in 1846 and it housed six families of lighthouse keepers all the way up until 1878 when it was abandoned. I'm not sure if the furniture inside is original, but they did a really good job of letting you take a small peek way back into the past. Speaking of the past, I'm sure glad that we have modern plumbing nowadays because these don't look too fun to use. If you're a big history buff, there's also this room behind the house that has a TV playing videos with information about the history of the area. And one last fun thing to do here is enjoy this massive picnic area. There were tons of birthday parties and I believe even a wedding going on while we were there. If we would have known about this, we would have brought our lunch because there was definitely plenty of spaces to enjoy it here. And that wrapped up our trip to Bill Bagg's Cape Florida State Park. What are your favorite spots to visit when you're in Florida? Please let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe because we have a lot of great videos coming soon. And for all the information about this park and visiting the lighthouse, head on over to thatadventurelife.com.